Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I want to talk about a feature of Photoshop called Vanishing Point. Vanishing Point allows you to create a 3D rendered composite. For example, I have this mock-up of a box. I'd like to take this image and have it appear as though that it's printed directly on the box so that it's on an angle to the camera and it's bent around the side of the box. It's very easy to do with Vanishing Point. What you need to do is first open both of the images up in Photoshop like I do. Start out with the image and we want to copy this to the clipboard. Simply hit Command or Control A to select the entire image, then hit Command or Control C to copy it to the clipboard. Now you're done with that image. Now let's go to the box mockup. We need to create a new layer. We don't want to work directly on the background layer. So we're going to create a new layer. And then we're going to go up to Filter and then down to Vanishing Point. And there's a number of tools in Vanishing Point. When you first open it, you'll start with this Create Plane Tool. And this is where all the magic happens. What you need to do is find four corners. And we're going to start with four corners. And we'll do the face of the box. And you can see you got this kind of little like bullseye thing. And you simply click on one corner, then drag, and you see you're dragging this blue line across, and click on the other corner. Now, if you can't see very well because it's too small, hold in the X key, the X key on your keyboard. Now, you do have to hold it in, and you'll stay zoomed in while you hold that in. And so click again. Now, I'm going to go down to the bottom, and I'm going to hold the X key again, and it will zoom in towards the bottom. I'll click there, then come over here. I'm still holding that X key in, and I'll click here. All right, so I have the first grid applied. Now, I want to double check that they're right on the edge, so I'm just going to keep the cursor towards the top here, hold the X key in, so I zoom in up there. And it's off a little bit, so I can reposition it, just move it by dragging it. And over here, it's pretty good. Over here, looks pretty good and over there looks pretty good I think maybe move this way down. okay so we have this front plane done but we need to do this side plane so to do that we just can't grab this handle and drag it out because it will not adhere to the plane over on this left hand side what we need to do make sure you're using this this uh, edit plane tool, this is the top tool. By default, after you draw your first plane, it will go right to that tool anyway. But just make sure you're there. Then go to the middle, any of the middle handles. There's only one middle handle here on the left. Hold in the command or control key. And while holding in that key, then drag it out. And you can see how it adheres to this plane on the edge. And looks okay. I'm going to zoom in, hit the X key. Oops, hit the X key. I'm hitting the C key. So you have to look down at your keyboard probably when you're pressing the keys. It might look better. And up here, we need to readjust up here. So we'll move up here. Again, I'll hold that X key in. Get it drawn. Pretty good. And down here. I think that might be it. Okay, now it's only showing this plane over here, but if you click over here, you'll see the plane shift. You have the entire plane drawn. You don't really have to worry about it. If you need to move a point again, you could come in and move a point, but I think it looks pretty good. Now remember, we copied that photo to the clipboard, so it's still on the clipboard. We need to just paste it here. Hit Command or Control V to do that, and you'll see that it will lay it on here doesn't look like anything yet. Now, it's way too big, right? So we need to zoom out so that we could get the edges of the image so that we could grab a handle and shrink this down. So to zoom out, hit Command or Control minus a few times. Now you can see where the dotted line is, is where that image is. It's over the entire image. It's not only over the box, it's over the table the box was on and everything else. We need to resize this. So hit Command or Control T to go to transform mode. Now, with latter versions of Photoshop, you could just grab a handle and it will keep the perspective. Uh, with old versions of Photoshop, curiously, you had to hold in the Shift key when you did do that if you wanted to keep perspective. 
For some reason, even though this is the latest version of Photoshop, you have to hold in the shift key as though it was an older version of Photoshop. So you need to hold in the shift key, and this only works on the corner handles. It doesn't work on the middle handles. Hold in the shift key and grab a corner handle and it will keep the perspective or the ratio that the image was shot at. Now I don't want to go too far. I want to go right to the bottom corner of the box. It's kind of snapping around. Because you're going to see in a second, I'm going to do it again, I'm holding the shift key. When I get it to that edge, I got to be very careful, go very slowly, right to that edge, right around there. Eventually, I'll just move it a touch and it snaps right in. Now look how it's wrapped around the box. Now I can move it. You can see how it's moving accordingly. I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. I hit it Command-0 or Control-0 and it will fit it to the screen. Now I have the Move tool still. I can move it around, right? Hey, it looks like it worked, right? Looks good. I think it looks pretty good. Now I wanted to put a title on this, so we need to go back to Photoshop proper. So I'm going to click OK. And this isn't a product, all right? I'm just using this as an example. I'm not selling Buffalo. This is the Buffalo skyline from above. Um, what we're going to do, though, is put the words Buffalo or the word Buffalo at the bottom. So we're going to get the type tool. Uh, I call it the text tool. Hit the T key on your keyboard. It's right here. And let's just go with this Bondi small cap, um, whatever. So we're going to click right on the image, all right? And we're going to type in, in this case, Buffalo. And if you need to resize it, you could resize it up here. You could hit this check mark, and you could, yeah, I prefer to use the character tool over here. You go up to Window and make sure it has the check mark next to it, and it will appear over here. That way, you don't have to have it like selected or highlighted, and you could come in and go like to size. Just hover over this and drag, and you could resize it, make it bigger. I could make it bold let's make it bold stuff like that okay now it's not really on the box correctly it's just laying there on top we need it to actually be in the right perspective as though it was printed on the box now it is type it isn't like an object so what we need to do is make it an object so right click right on the layer and we want to rasterize the type. That's when I say make it an object. I probably, that's confusing. I shouldn't have said that because that's implying I want to make it a smart object. I do not. I want to rasterize the type. So forgive me for that. We'll rasterize the type. Now the type is rasterized. Now hold in the command or control key and click directly on that layer of letters. You see we have a selection now. Now we're going to copy that to the clipboard. Hit Commander Control C. Okay, turn that layer back off. So it's off now. We could get rid of the marching ants. Hit Commander Control D. Then go down to our layer one. That's our layer that we wrapped our image on. Let's get a new layer above that. Then we're going to go back up to Filter, Vanishing Point. You don't have to redraw the grid, it's still there. We copied the letters to the clipboard. So we need to paste it here, Commander Control V. Now it's up here in the top right hand corner, you probably can't even see it, but if I drag it down here, you can see how it loops around and we could put it like right where we want it. Let's down here at the bottom, right? We can move it around a little more, maybe up a little bit. Okay, click OK. So there's that. Now you may want to finish it off with one little thing. Um, the left side of this box, it probably should be a little darker, don't you think? Uh, because it, it just, the lighting doesn't look right. It's just kind of laid on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit by hitting Command Plus. I think Command Plus just once is good. And I'm going to get this tool right here, this polygonal lasso, lasso tool. And then what I want to do is click on the corners of this left-hand panel. So click there in there. Now you got to kind of be careful that you're clicking right where you need to click. So I'm kind of doing this with the microphone stuffed in my face. I'm doing the best I can. And come up here. So we have a selection now of this left hand panel. Then all you need to do is go up here and get an adjustment layer that's going to make that darker. You could do curves, you could do levels. If you want to be super simple, just get the exposure adjustment layer. Take exposure down. 
See how it's only affecting that left-hand side. Like that. And that's that. Minus, or just zoom out a little bit, hit Command minus. So there is our 3D rendering composite that I did where I took the image I have of the city of Buffalo. I laid it on the box and I put the word Buffalo below there and I darken this edge a little bit so it looks a little more realistic. And that's that. That's how you use Vanishing Point. I hope this helps you better utilize Photoshop. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>